QuickBooks Online Statement Form. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online. Here we are in Google Search Engine. We're gonna be using the free QuickBooks Online Test Drive, typing in QuickBooks Online Test Drive to the Search Engine, selecting the option that has Intuit.com within the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks. We're selecting the United States version of the software and verifying we're not a robot. Zooming in a bit, holding down control up on the scroll wheel. We're currently at 125% on the zoom in, hitting the drop down for the cog, noting that we're in the accountant view, not the business view. We'll try to toggle back and forth between the two so you can see where things are located within them. Right clicking on the tab up top to put reports in as we do every time, duplicating the tab. Right clipping the duplicated tab to duplicate it again, back to the tab to the left, selecting the reports and we want to be picking the balance sheet as that's thinking we'll tap to the right reports on the left this time the profit and loss or income statement we're going to close the hamburger or ham boogie and scroll up top and do the range change selecting the first range and i'm going to go from 010122 january 1st 2022 to 123122 december 31st 2022 tab run it to refresh it and then tab to the left and scroll up close the hand boogie and then do the range change from 010122 to 123122 and run run it to refresh it and then first tab that's the setup process we do every time support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We're gonna hit the plus button, noting that all of these forms are the things that we put into the system in order to make, in essence, the journal entries on a day-to-day -day process. We break out these processes, in essence, by cycle, customer cycle, the vendor cycle, the employee cycle. We've been looking over here into the other. The fact that they're over here in other and not included in one of these cycles means that they're not either part of the normal cycle they're a little bit they're going to be something a little bit outside of it or possibly they have certain transactions such as the bank deposit that aren't specifically in one particular cycle such as the customer cycle because you might have deposits for things like you putting money in as the owner or a loan now we're looking at the statements now which is a little funny that they put over here but i think they put it in this section because it's it's a process that you're, you're going to be often doing if you have an accrual based system on the customer side of things, even though the statement isn't really a form. So I would almost think that they would put the statements over here under the customer cycle because you would think the statements are generally going to be something that would be under the customer cycle, but they're not really a form. So maybe that's why they put them over here in the other. So that the statements are only going to be used they're kind of linked to the customer cycle if you're in the full service cycle, meaning uh, you're generally going to be issuing invoices and then tracking the accounts receivable and then trying to get the receive payment on it. In that instance, then you're, you're going to want to periodically go back and, and try to collect on the receivables that are outstanding. So you could do that by, re -ish by, by issuing the invoice again, and, but you might make statements because the statements could possibly condense multiple transactions that are in place to, to, to create a statement for reminders. So the general process would look something like this. We're gonna make an invoice, let's make a couple invoices, and then we'll think about constructing basically statements from them. So let's say I'm gonna make an invoice and Let's say that it's gonna be for an AAA. I'm just gonna make the customer so we can kind of think about how these statements would work. And then you would need an email address if you're going to email the statements, which is quite common, as well as if you're emailing the invoice. I'm not gonna put one here now, however. And then I'm gonna go down and let's just, let's just make up a couple invoices. So we're gonna say service item. Let's say we had, uh, that was for $1,000, let's say. 
and then I'll put another one down here. Let's go for uh, a pump, the good old pumps that we've been, we sell a lot of those. I don't even know what they do, but whatever. So there they are, 1,240. What's this gonna do? It's gonna increase accounts receivable. That's what we're focused on. The other side's gonna go to revenue, sales tax, and if there's any inventory goes down and cost of goods sold will be impacted. Now let's make this this one like, like it was due a while ago. So let's say this was on, let's say this was on uh, 10, 15, 2, 2, something like that. So it was due 11, 14. So it's gonna be past due as of the time we're, we're doing this. Let's go ahead and save and new, and let's say save and new and make another one for AAA. Something's not quite right. What What is it? Uh, date that's often, so we want the date to be, it's an inventory tracking item, okay. So I can't choose this one because I need to track the inventory. So let's just delete that one. I should be good with the service item. And so now we'll just bring it down to a thousand and save and new because I, I didn't have any inventory before that point in time. So I'm gonna say save and new and that's good. Okay, so now I'll make another one for AAA and let's say this one and let's say that this is gonna be another service item, let's say gardening and let's say this was for 1,500. So there's just to make it different and let's say this one happened on 11, 11, one, tab, tab. And so we'll save that, save new, and let's make one more. And so we'll say this is gonna be another one for AAA. So we've got the outstanding invoices we haven't collected on. And let's make this one as of 12, 25, two, two, just to change it up, switch things up. I should have the pumps in at that time so I can choose the pump this time without it giving me an error. Let's say it's 30, so 450. So let's do that, the total's 486. So these should all increase the accounts receivable. So I'm gonna say save and close this time, save it and close it. And then of course we might track that. So there's an impact on the financial statements, which of course is mainly we're focusing in on the accounts receivable. If I run this, the accounts receivable is going up and that's what we would expect. And now we're awaiting the payment. But, and that's all we're looking at notice from an accounting standpoint for just building the financial statements. We're basically saying, uh, there, there's the transaction. What I expect to happen next is to receive the payment. But from an, and there's the other ones were dated prior to this. So I'm not gonna locate, but there's one I think, and there's one. So I'm gonna go back. I also wanna sort this data out by who owes us the money. And obviously from an internal perspective, our goal is to get paid on it, right? So if I go to the first tab, now I can go down to the sales area and we can track those invoices here. So I can say here are my uh, invoices. I can look for the open invoices. And so now we've got AAA here and we have a couple more for AAA, for example. And I can go to my invoices and do a similar kind of tracking. If I'm looking at that particular customer, let's go to the customer tab and look at AAA. And so now we have these three invoices. Now, the things that we could do with these, obviously I could select these invoices and basically send a reminder saying, hey, you owe me this. But if I had for this particular customer, they, they have three outstanding invoices, right? So if I, if I send them a reminder, I'll have to send them, you know, the three reminders possibly for these three separate invoices. Now, of course, it could be quite tedious if I had to go into each individual customer and send out the open invoices and reminders on an invoice by invoice basis. If I have a lot of customers and they all have a lot of open invoices possibly that I need to try to track. So we would like to then come up with a system that we can send out periodic reminders, most likely by email, because most of the time these days, we have the email addresses of the clients. So one, one way you can think of that is if we go back to the customers, I'm gonna do that by going to the customers tab here. And you could say, let, let's look at the customers and see all of them that have open invoices so I can sort them thusly. And so now I've got this one where I had three open invoices, uh, one open invoice, uh, two open invoices here for this particular customer. So you would think, how can I just send them a statement to basically collect on 
these items to give them a reminder. Well, you might select all of them and then hit the batch here. And then we could say we want to basically create statements. Or you could just go directly up top to here and then go to the statements. By default, it basically selects kind of like all, all the statements. So if I go into the statements this way, in other words, notice that this first one doesn't have an email address. That's why it's listed on the left-hand side. So that could cause us a problem clearly if we're sending the, the statements out uh, by email. And then, but we could also print them out as well. So you've got the two tabs here. You've got the missing email and this one are all the other basically items. So let's just take a look at it real quick. You've got the statement type. So you have a couple different statement types that you can take a look at. We'll try to kind of toggle between them so you could get a little bit of a difference between the, the statement types. You've got the statement date, which is typically going to be the state that you're doing this. And then you've got the drop down to have all. So these are going to be all of all of them. Or you could be picking uh, the open items, which is let's go. Let's do this all apply. So now with all you've got the missing ones and then the statements that have the email address on this side. And then if I pick just the open, which is most likely what you're going to do most of the time, again, you've got the missing email and then all the rest of them that have open invoices. And then you could just be saying overdue. So maybe you do just the overdue ones periodically. And so these are the ones that have overdue items. So usually if you're doing this every couple weeks to try to collect on your receivables, you might go to open and then try to batch this all into the uh, open items. Then we have the start date and the end date. So the start date means basically that's going to be the cutoff. We're not going to have a lot of detail for the information before that time. So if there are open invoices, as we do have some for AAA before that point, we may not have them listed, but they'll just be included in like the opening balance. And then we have the end date here. So let's see what that looks like and then we'll change it. So I'm going to say print preview. Let's check it out. If we want to check that one out just for the AAA item. So you can see you have this beginning balance here and then you've got this line item for invoice 1040 on uh, the 486. So there is that one. Now, if I change that, if I close that out and I change my beginning date, let's make it from January 01. So it goes for the full year now and apply it. I'm looking just for the open items. So let's look at AAA and print that one. And we could just see that one here. So now we've got those three invoices that are listed out here uh, that way because in the beginning balance is zero because there were no open invoices before the beginning of the year. So let's close that out and let's just take a quick look at the other kinds of reports. So if I go to the, this is the balance forward report. If I look at the uh, open item last 365 days. So now it's saying, you know, specifically within 365 days and apply it. Let's take a look at this one and run it. And so now we've got our items uh, listed out this way, this way amount, uh, open amount and so on and kind of a running balance. So you could take a look and choose which format you think is best. If I look at it on this side and look at all these other ones, we can send out all of these at the same time because we have the email addresses for them and print them and take a look at those. So here we have AAA and here's the format for some of them. And you can see how they're all basically listed out here. And so I'm going to close that one out and then just check the last format uh, transaction statement. Let's run it and let's just pick the statement available for all of them and print that one and check it out. So there we have, so it's a little bit different format of it. So we've got the invoices laid out and uh, the total down below on this one. So notice this one gives a bit of detail on the information in it. So a little more detail on the items that are involved. So do you want just a long line item? And if you have a really like long invoice, then then it can be somewhat tedious if you're including all the in information or line items on the invoice. So you got to think about how much detail do you want in the statement. So for example, if I close this out and I close this out and I go into one of my invoices for, for, for AAA 
and let's just add a, a few more line items. I got in trouble adding multiple line items because it it had inventory issues, but whatever. This time I'm gonna say service item. So let's add three line items here and save and close that. And now let's just take a look at the difference on the statement. So if I then go up to the plus button up top and go into the statements. And so now I look at the transaction statement. Let's print that one, just looking at AAA here. And so hold on, I gotta change the date range. Let's bring the beginning balance from 01, uh, 01, apply it and then print it. And so there we have, this one's just giving you the line items. Notice it's not giving you that detail of each of the description in it. And then if I go to this one and apply it and run the report, let's check that one out. So it just gives you the due. So it gives you that due amount, but it's not really giving you the detail of each of the line items. We're going to apply this one and run it. So, so it's not really giving you each of the line items. So these are going to be great like summary statements. You can choose which format that you want on it. If they ask more questions about it, then of course you, you could follow up with that and say, okay, you want the detail with it. Then we can basically uh, send out the reminder here on a particular invoice. If I send a reminder out, it should give you, it should give basically the detail on it. And then you've got your message basically on the reminder. Most of the time you'll be emailing them out. So you'll have basically that information up top. So the general idea on the statements is of course going to be if you're in a system where you send out the invoices, you've got to collect on the invoices periodically, possibly every two weeks or so, we're going to want to send out reminders to the open invoices uh, that are out there, possibly monthly or something like that. And so we want to do that usually in bulk would be the easiest thing uh, with the statements. The statements will, will be able to condense multiple outstanding items into the statement and you can choose whether you want to roll the balance over or not or show all the all the detail in terms of multiple line items depending on the date range and then you want to do that periodically and then you can also give them more detail by giving them reminders of a particular invoice which hopefully will give them the more detail about particular line items on an invoice so if they called in and they said hey you gave me this statement i've got these invoice line items i don't know exactly what you charged me for and so on then you might want to give them the invoice again it was like well i gave you the invoice didn't you find the invoice so that's and you can get into the statements here or you can go into the customer field and i could select all the customers which is probably intuitively uh the thing that would make kind of sense and then you can select uh your statements over here at the bottom you can cancel you can print or preview and then you've got the save and send which is the most likely format meaning you're going to email it out to the people all right, let's close this out. Uh, do you want to leave without saving? I do. And then I'm going to open up the hamburger. I'm going to hit the cog and just take a look at these same formats on the business view just to see where we're located on the business view so you can find all this stuff. Notice, of course, the plus button. Let's go back to the home page. Plus button, same location, no difference there. There's the statements. We've been working basically in the get paid pay area. So if I go into that area and then the customers and the get paid, then we've been looking here and there's your open invoices. There's AAA. We also took a quick look at the invoices on the left hand side. And then we looked at the items uh, or the transactions that's in a different location under bookkeeping and then transactions. And we looked at the uh, items, which are the sales items. And we were sorting here. And then we also looked at the reports. So everything's everything's there. It's just in a different location. Reports are in the business overview and then the reports. So you want to be able to kind of navigate around, try not to get frustrated with QuickBooks moving things around or changing the entire layout. All of a sudden, it's okay because it's all the same. It's just housed in a different place typically.